Hi everyone, I'm Darren from Comcrop, a local commercial farm that uses advanced hydroponics technology to grow food in underutilized spaces. Because all of us love having plants at home, today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how you can set up your own hydroponic system to grow your own food. The key to growing plants is understanding that they are living things and they need the right environment such as light, air, support, as well as food and water to grow well. Today, we will learn about the food that plants need, which are nutrients, and how some hydroponic solutions can give the right mix of nutrients for them. Plants need nutrients just like humans need iron and calcium in our food. We will also be going through how to set up a small little simple hydroponic system for yourself. Nutrient film technique systems run a thin film of water along the roots of the plant, hence the name. These allow the roots to access both the nutrients and air. Deep water culture systems have their roots dipped in the solution itself. Air is usually provided to the roots through an air pump. Ebb and flow systems mimic the natural flooding of soil during rain, but can be slightly trickier to maintain due to the complexity of the system. All these methods allow for the water to be recycled and minimizes water loss through runoff. Next, I'll be showing you the Kretke system, which is very similar to the deep water culture system except without the pump. This system ensures oxygenation as the water level drops and can be easily improved by the use of an air pump. Let me show you how to set up a hydroponic system using the Kretke method. These are the materials you will need. Once you have the materials ready, we can then start to put the kit together. These are the typical sponges that we use for growing. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that they are pre-soaked. And you, we usually do that for about 5 or 10 minutes just to get them nice and wet. After pre-soaking them, we can then open up the cut that is there and start to put the seeds in. I like to put about 2 or 3 seeds inside just to make sure that these plants will grow and this is what they look like after I've put the seeds into them and we can then put the sponges at the bottom of the container. We will do this about three or four times for each of the sponges following which we will just add a little bit of water to the container. The suggestion is to put about half a cm or one cm of water into the container just enough to make sure that the bottom of the sponge is wet. And we will leave them here for a couple of days while the seeds germinate. After germination, the plants should look something like this. You will start to see the little leaves popping out at the top. More importantly, you must make sure that the roots start to come out from the bottom. What we can then do is to put this sponge into the net pots. We just squeeze it in, right? Make sure that it's nice and level and make sure that the roots are hanging down to be able to touch the water later. We will then fill up the rest of the container with the nutrients. I will pour all of the nutrients into the container and fill it up. We can then cover it up, put the net pots in with the plants and leave them there. When they are fully grown, they will look something like this and you can then start to harvest them and you can eat them. Alternatively, if you don't have the exact same materials that we're using here today, you can use some of these other items that you might find lying around the house. For example, instead of the net pots, you could use cups or plastic cups, or some of these pots, or even cut the tops of a PET bottle. But do remember you need to ensure that they have holes at the bottom so that the nutrients can run through, and also you do need to adjust the size of the holes that you're cutting into the lid. In place of the sponges, you could use some of these horticultural cubes or even cotton wool, anything that can hold the seeds and absorb a little bit of water. Do remember to check the materials that you are using for the sponges because some of these may have chemicals like melamine that you don't want getting into your food. Thank you and I hope you've learned something today. Visit us to find out more about how we can feed the community.